Good morning guys, Matty Extreme Auto Caravan and Camping. Another common issue, as requested from you guys, always asking for more technical videos. Haven't done one for a while. Um, actually, I've done heaps, but haven't had the chance to edit them. But anyway, I'll do this one live here. This is Jayco Silverline, as you can see, and we're doing a lithium upgrade on this, but it's a prime example of the melted 12 pin plug that is common with the larger three-way fridges. So Jayco doing the 12 pin setup is fine. Um, if the pins are not maintained or if they close, so on your 12 pin um, on the male side, if they if they don't make good contact in the other end of it, so male to female, the byproduct is heat. Okay, poor contact is heat where the electrons are trying to move through it and it creates heat. Remember back in school with the old bike pump, you know, you'd pump it, you'd feel heat at the end of it because it's a large chamber and you're trying to push all those air molecules right through the base, which is a small, you know, you're trying to pump up a football or a bike um, tire or something like that. So you're, you're restricting it. When you restrict it, the byproduct is heat. The well, same bears true for low voltage applications like 12 volt. You know, just as there is in this one, it's created heat, so I'll show it. All right, and there's pin, Eight, nine should be in Jayco, so the white and pink on the, on the Jayco's. Nine and ten there, ten being earth. This is actually very close to dead short. In actual fact, if I were to move this left and right, it's probably going to touch. Um, you know, it's, it's not far off of shorting out anyway, dead short. But that's not what creates... You know the melting it, the melting is because of those pins they close and they create a poor contact whether that's dirt debris anyway i, I don't like it I've, I've never liked flowing high current through a 12 pin um, i've always been fond of the anderson system which is why you see me do the red and gray anderson system so this is this is the jayco end and um, i'll get into what's happening here because this has all been done and we're fixing it i'll get into that in a minute but let's just talk about this fridge line so that white and pink will run all the way up to the standard Jayco, you know, jumble of mess under there, which we all know about. I'll get out of that there. So that runs into there. And then they run it to a, a blue point, and then it'll run all the way under the van and then over to the fridge, which on these silver lines, the fridge is on the awning side. And it'll run into this thick black and red. So the other end of that, is the white and pink so the automatic fridge runs on that white and pink line now remember what i said about the trigger wire guys take note of that d plus wire all right so whenever i get those phone calls of you know my fridge doesn't work or i'm getting issues see that d plus wire see what jaco do that's tapped into this this is the main feed so what that means is the vehicle pins nine and ten need to be isolated so these here whoop, that there on the vehicle needs to be isolated because then when the isolator turns on and off it'll shut the fridge down and then that little 15 minute timer will start on your three-way automatic fridge now the back of the vehicle now on the corresponding pin and you can see the the heat created but look at this horrible job I'm not going to name names on who has done this it's not the point we're here to fix it and fixing is what we will do that's just twin core six, isn't it, Riley? Yep. So six mil cable for a 25 plus amp load, some, you know, 12, 12 meters away. This is the result. And this is always going to happen. Trying to flow high current through these pins. We don't like it. So what we're gonna do on this one is we've got to run the appropriate gauge cable. So our mate doesn't get any charging issues and uh, three-way fridge issues. Charging, I'll get into in a second, but take note of all the six mil wires running off of this puppy. So Ford Ranger here, but I've just got no isolators, just, oh no, we do, but they're just relays, which is fine, but you know, six mil wires. I mean, even if you were to read the specifications, um, it needs more than six mil. I think the minimum that Jayco will recommend is, is 10 mil square. And, and then there's a reason for it. And that reason is for energy transfer. It's quite simple. You know, you, you're trying to move power from the front of your vehicle 
five, six meters in, just in vehicle only. And then it's gonna get through your drawbar, through your Anderson connection, uh, through your whatever connection method you're using, all the way to the battery system with your three-way fridge, and it never gets there. So this is why I'm a big pusher and a massive advocate for the dual Anderson system. If you guys are running Alco ESC on an Anderson plug, that's fine. You'll, you know, you probably have to go for a third Anderson plug. Um, having Alco in, into a 12 pin is a bit frowned upon, obviously, because if you want to disable your stability control, you're not going to pull your 12 pin and lose all your brakes and lights. So um, it's it's all about the three-way fridge, right? It, it just needs high current. And to get that energy through there, avoid the 12 pin at all costs. Uh, the modification to the Anderson plug is the best way. Like I said to you guys, try and keep it on a colored system. That way, uh, not only are the colors different, obviously, but the, the key differently, you know, the red is keyed differently to the gray and the, the gray is keyed differently to the yellow and so forth. They physically will not plug into each other. So, you know, old mate, anyone, you can't bugger it up. You know, red to red, gray to gray. So the modification on this one for the charging system is because we're doing a lithium upgrade, we're doing the Red Arc DC charger. It's only the 25 amp model, so it's not as high current as my 50s that you see me do. However, these still require 30 odd amps on the input side, so that's why we'll put the Anderson plug for this feed. Now we know that. Now I know that this is gonna have a 30 amp load some 10 meters away. Well, you know, you treat the fridge the same same way. Um, obviously gonna put the charger in this and set this to lithium. We've already done the solar on this with the solar regulator for the Victron. Um, so we're gonna do that for lithium as well. Now he's got two batteries in this AGM batteries down here. They're gonna get removed, um, already been removed. And we're gonna put one lithium in here and move the charger. The main charger is gonna be down here really close to this battery system. Same with the DC charger. All of the charges are gonna be really close. The factory C-Tech in the silver lines are all the way back here. So the flow of power um, in factory form on a Jayco, um, if you guys don't already know, is through pin number two on the trailer plug. So pin number two, I'm gonna open it now. It's actually already been disabled on this one and old mate has put it on an Anderson plug. So what they've done is, I'll bring it in so you can see it. So they've just pulled out pin two, which is black, right? So that went to pin two. And then they just had, which that went into the positive of that. That I've just chopped off. That went onto the earth, there, as you can see. I'll just quickly cut it off. So they've tapped into the white wire for the earth. And then they've put that to the positive. Pardon me. That's a great move. However, it's still factory Jayco from this point onwards. All this does in my eyes is change the plug. That's it. If you haven't changed the cable, nothing's changed. All right. And because nothing's changed in cable size, you're not going to get any more power through. It's probably a better connection, of course, because it's, you know, it's an Anderson plug, but there's, you're not going to get any more power through. And I'll show you why. This is why. One meter, two meter, three meter, four meter, five, six, seven, it's eight meters, nine meters. There's the wheel arch, nine meters, right? That location is where the factory C-Tech is. Pin two runs into the aux in pin on the ST35 version three or whatever it is. Where are the batteries? I'll tell you where the batteries are. You've just seen another one, another two, another three, another four and five. So we're talking a very, very, very long distance with no DC charger on the line and you're trying to charge 240 odd ampere hours of, of, of AGM batteries. Now this is why these batteries have failed. They're just not getting the voltage high enough to charge. So you got five, six meters in the Ford Ranger, another eight meters before it even gets to the C-Tech, then another five to return from the C-Tech because of that aux in pin from the battery pins all the way to the batteries in the, the club lounge area. It's, it's too long, it's crazy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put an Anderson plug on this drawbar that will feed that DC charger, which is going to be kissing the battery like that close to it. There will be no energy loss over that line. Now, because I've seen this vehicle, there's only six mil in that. Now that line will change as well. We're gonna run that to a thicker system and we'll put it on a gray Anderson plug and do it our way. And these guys will be guaranteed to get 25 per hour from their vehicle with the solar on top of it because their existing system is a Victron system that we did a while back. 
So their charge rate is going to be through the roof. Obviously the corresponding fridge line in the vehicle, we're going to do it at the same time because we're already running wires. And we will put it on the appropriate gauge cable and this fridge will function as it should, as per manufacturer's spec. And if these guys get their fridge cold before they drive off, they can guarantee their fridge is going to be cold when they arrive at their destination on a 45 degree day, middle of the bush, flick it over to gas and the temperature won't, won't have changed on their fridge. Keeping that gauge of cable is vital. You, you're flowing all of that current. It needs to get to that fridge without compromise. So at the end of today, he'll have a red and gray Anderson plug on his drawbar. He'll have a red and gray Anderson plug on his vehicle. That fridge will operate per manufacturer's spec. The DC charger will charge the new lithium battery system up to full and the solar will work on top of that. So these guys, you know, they've got five, four or 500 watts on the roof. They'll get, you know, another 20, 20 odd amps, possibly more through the solar as well as the 25 amps. So, you know, they're pushing 45, 50 amps in good sun while they're driving. That's, that's brilliant. This is only one lithium battery we're putting in this. So 120 amp hour lithium battery, if he depletes it, you know, there's bugger all left in it, a couple of hours and he's full again. That's, um, that's doing all right. So check out the Anderson system, guys. I've done heaps of videos on them before. It's pretty much the same, probably slight differences now with lithium um, being the fact that they love to be charged so the charge rates have increased now um but that's how you do it just making it work and yeah enjoy